Hello and welcome back, this is Dawn. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at casing a card. So this is a card I created a couple weeks back in a Facebook Live and I really love the design. And I wanna stretch this design so we're going to copy and selectively edit it. Now, casing is something that you can case other people's work or you can case your own work. The key is to use the design as inspiration without directly copying it. And looking at these cards side by side, you would never claim that one was a copy of the other, but the right one was heavily inspired by the left one, as are all the cards we're gonna to create today. So let's take a look at this design and break it down. All right, so we've got a strong central focal point of which is an oval in this case. I'm gonna carry that over, I like that. We've got the hot foiled script sentiment, love this. Accented with floral clusters using uh, some dyes here. So that we're definitely gonna carry over. And in fact, we're gonna use the exact same die set. We've also used a specialty paper. In this case, it is the brushed gold cardstock. Love that, we're gonna carry that over. And then we've got a subtle background. We've got 3D embossing in the original, but we're gonna switch it up a little bit and we're gonna pull from that foil and we're gonna add some foil detail to the background. Now another thing is that this design has a mostly monochromatic color scheme with a pop of color. So I'm gonna be utilizing that as well and making several versions. Okay, so I've done most of the die cutting up front. I used the Spellbinders Country Road Collection by Annie Williams. This is their garden builder set. And I will have everything linked in the video description below. I've mixed and matched a bunch of companies here. So if I miss anything, make sure you check there for any product that you're looking for. All right, so for our oval, we're gonna be using the Honeybee Stamps Lovely Layer Slice and Stump die set. This is gonna be perfect for creating our oval element to house our sentiment and to ground our little floral clusters. Most of the cardstock that I'm using today is from Spellbinders and Concord and Ninth. I've picked a light and a dark of each color family, and then I have chosen three shades of green. In my uh, floral arrangements, I like to mix my greens. I've mentioned this before, it just adds more interest when you have more than one shade of green. Now for the wood slices, I'm gonna use the, I think this is Timber from Spellbinders, and then Wheat from Concord and Ninth. Now off camera, I went ahead and cut the pieces for all of my slices here, and then I'm just going to adhere them together using some liquid adhesive. Now I did cut several of each of the sizes because I can use the one large slice by itself, it's an oval-ish shape, or I can layer them together and still retain that oval shape, but make it a little fresh, right? Keep each one just a little different. If you've been here before, you know I don't like mass producing the exact same design, so this way I can switch it up and keep things a little interesting and not get bored creating the same card over and over. So with all of these slices now cut, it's time to start assembling our flowers. And to make this go quick, I already know that I'm doing tone on tone, so I took some of the larger flowers and then I've lined up their opposite, not their opposite color, but their lighter or darker shade right above them laid down dots of glue in the middle, and now I can just pick those up with my crystal katana and put them right into place, and I can just go right down the row. I'll do the same thing with the centers. I'll add some more glue to the center of those flowers, and then I will just start picking up the little flower centers that I've already cut from that um, brushed gold cardstock and add that in. Now for the mustardy color, uh, I thought the brushed gold would get lost on that mustard color. They're kind of very similar. So instead, I'm just gonna use some gems and place those in the center of the yellow flowers. Again, this is just another way to make them slightly different, but using the same design principle. Okay, so moving on to our sentiment. Now we did the hot foil sentiment here in the center, you see that, but we were doing it on a smooth background. Here we've got some embossing going on on that uh, tree slice and the gold on the craft really not gonna stand out very well, especially since we have that embossing in it. It's just gonna make it really hard to read and it won't be legible. So what I've decided to do is instead of hot foiling directly onto the stump, we're going to hot foil and then use the coordinating die cuts to cut it out. And for that, we're gonna be using the Honeybee Stamps uh, Foil Script Love Hot Foil Stamp Set with coordinating dies. Now for the Original card, I used the Seahorse Kisses Sentiments from Spellbinders. Uh, I wanted to still use the hot foil, I wanted to incorporate the script, but I wanted to show that you can use other items that you may already have in your stash as well, and these were a great option. 
Okay, so I've got my Spellbinders Glimmer Machine out. It is heated up. I've pulled out my colored cardstock here and the matte gold foil from Spellbinders. Now each card is going to be monochromatic. So the for the purple, this is their, I think it's Royal Amethyst. Uh, for the yellow or the gold card, I'm going to use um, Tuscan something. Tuscan something or another. It, it'll be in the description box below. And for the pink, it is their... I don't think it's Dahlia. I almost said Wildberry. Dahlia. All right. So like I said, we're using that um, matte gold. This is one of my favorite foils. And we're going to get everything set up. Now, when I'm hot foiling, hot foiling is a process. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it takes longer to hot foil than it does to stamp or even to heat emboss. So when I'm doing hot foiling, I like to get it all set up and do it all at once. So we are going to do all of our hot foiling here. We're going to do our sentiment and we're going to do our backgrounds while I have the glimmer machine out and heat it up. Now for the other cardstocks, we used the gold, but for this gold colored cardstock, just like the brushed gold cardstock, I felt like it wouldn't show up on that Tuscan. I also felt the same way about the gold. So instead we're gonna use the prism uh, foil here from Spellbinders. Now this is holographic and it has a silver base. So it's definitely gonna show up better on this Tuscan cardstock, which reads as a gold color. And as always, when I'm hot foiling, I like to multitask. So while I've got one heating up, I'm going to go ahead and take care of any over foiling with my mono sand eraser and also set up my die cutting here. Again, this is one of those things instead of waiting for each step, I can make use of that time while the hot foil machine is doing its thing. Once all of those are hot foiled and ready to be die cut, I'm gonna move on to our background. I'm gonna use the Essential Duo Lines Rectangles from Spellbinders, and this is going to give us a beautiful hot foiled rectangle around the outside of our panel. Now setting this up, instead of using a full sheet, you could definitely do that. You could rip off a whole full sheet that would cover the entire rectangle of foil. However, um, I like to cut off little strips. I do not want to risk wasting a whole bunch of foil there in the center if I were to get over foiling in the center area. And then I'd have a lot more cleanup work to do as well. So instead I like to just cut off four thin strips that I will then tape into place to do my hot foiling. So I'm gonna lay that rectangle down on my cardstock. I'm going to tape a hinge at the top and then I'm gonna flip that back. Then I'm going to fit each of my foil strips up under that rectangle on the top, bottom, left, and right. It doesn't have to be perfect at this point because you will be able to um, kind of shift and uh, nudge them around. But I just like to lay them in the general vicinity. And then I will flip my rectangle back over into place, trim off any excess and then tape this down on all four sides. This is important because we don't want that foil to shift at all. And now she's ready to set on our glimmer machine and I'll press the timer and wait for it to be ready. In the meantime, I will get the next uh, background set up. Then you'll see here when I pull this off the machine, even though we had some foil overlapping, it doesn't matter. Uh, as long as there's foil under your hot plate, it will transfer the foil correctly. So even if your foil is too small um, for the area that you're heat fo you're hot foiling, <laughs> heat foiling. Wow, we have so many terms that are so close together that it's hard to keep them straight. But here you can see, even though they were overlapped, they still transferred the foil. So you can use up your scraps, layer your scraps together. As long as your plate is completely covered by the foil, it's going to transfer correctly. Now I do have some over foiling here. Again, this is an easy cleanup job. Just use your mono sand eraser to just sand off any over foiling. It comes off super easy. And a little bit of over foiling is always better than under foiling in my opinion. With all of the foiling done, I'm going to go ahead and do all of my die cut of my sentiments. So I'm working in more of an assembly line type um, fashion here. I 
already know that I'm gonna be creating four very similar cards in just different color schemes. I'll be making minor tweaks and adjustments to the, to the um, nuances of the design, but the basic concept is all gonna be the same. So working in this assembly type, this assembly line type manner helps things to go faster. So I'm die cutting all of my sentiments and then I will die cut several blanks of the sentiment to layer behind them because we already know we're gonna layer up at least three and that will give that sentiment some weight. Okay, so our backgrounds are done, our sentiments are done. We've got all of our florals, uh, our flower pieces assembled and all of the flower pieces, <clears throat> excuse me, die cut. Now it's time for the fun part. We're just gonna create our little floral arrangements. We're gonna build each of the focal points for each of the cards. And you can make each one of these individually different or you can choose to use the exact same layout for each card. I prefer to make mine all slightly different, but again, I enjoy this process. This is the fun part of the card making for me. All of the rest is just a uh, filler. <laughs> it all just supports this part for me. So mine will all be individually different, but you could certainly create yourself a formula. I'm keeping the sentiment nearby and I'm continually holding it over just so that I can get a good idea of where I want to fill out this little arrangement and where I need to maybe dial it back a little bit. So like I said, you can pick a formula. For this one, I'm going to do a visual triangle around the sentiment. So I'm gonna create three floral clusters. One is going to be large, one is going to be medium, and one is gonna be small. And they're gonna be arranged around the sentiment in a visual triangle. Now once I get the meat of this arrangement to a place that I'm comfortable with, I'm gonna go ahead and start adhering things down. I'm building this on the fly. Normally, I would build the whole thing out, or I wouldn't say normally, on larger central arrangements. I would build the whole thing out, I would take press and seal, I would pick up the arrangement, and then I would glue it all down. Here, I'm kind of building on the fly, and these are gonna be three individual little arrangements. So for the purpose of this, it was easier for me to get the base of the arrangement to where I was happy with it, and then start adhering it down and then build up from there. This allowed me a little wiggle room as well to make minor adjustments if need be. So you can see here, I just hold things in place, squeeze out a little liquid adhesive, push them in place until they take hold. They don't have to be um, extremely securely adhered at this point. I just don't want them moving and shifting around. So a little dot of glue here and there will hold those pieces in place for me until I'm completely done. And then I can come around and just squirt extra adhesive up under pieces. Another thing I like to do is where, where possible, I, would, I will adhere multiple pieces together. So like these two leaves, I know that they're gonna overlap. So I'm gonna adhere those together and then I can adhere those or move them around as one piece instead of two individual pieces. This is just going to make it easier again for me to continue building this arrangement without things just moving and shifting all over the place on me. Now this little squiggly piece is, um, this is from the seasonal decor uh, set here that's from the same collection, that Country Road collection, and it's actually the vine from the pumpkin, but I thought that it made a beautiful little floral accent piece to add into our little um, floral arrangement here. I'm also using that brush, some of the elements cut from that brushed gold cardstock to play on that gold that's going throughout the rest of the card, to play off of the hot foil from the sentiment and then from that rectangle around the outside. So once I had the large and the medium uh, floral arrangement built there, I decided to move this onto my background piece so that I could get a better idea for scale, uh, how big I wanted each arrangement to be and how much room I actually had. And I've decided to layer up another slice on top of that larger slice and I just think that this is going to proportionally fill out that background 
and really fill up the entire card front. So I'm going to use a little bit of foam adhesive on the back of my larger slice. And this is, again, I'm going to hold this into place. I, I've made a decision here that this is where I want it to live. And as I continue to finish building that focal point, I don't want it shifting and moving around on me. Prior, I had it on my sweet petunia mat, so it held it in place. But now I've moved over to my cardstock, and it's going to shift and move on me. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere that into place. Now I can continue to build out that focal point. You'll notice that my floral arrangements are tucked into the bare spots of my sentiment, so it all kind of flows and looks like one piece. Even though these are all separate elements, the design itself reads as one, and they're all grounded by those wood slices. So with all of my florals in place, it's time to adhere my sentiment. I'm using some foam adhesive that I've cut down to fit into the larger areas behind that sentiment. And I've left a little room there at the bottom of hugs. You can see there's a little gap there. I'm going to add a sub sentiment. And for that, we're going to use the Honeybee Stamps Mini Messages Stamps and Dies. This is great. It has a lot of these small sentiments that cover a lot of occasions. And then it also has some coordinating dies. So we're going to heat emboss that in gold. I'm going to again use that same dahlia color prepping my paper with the Rabbit Hole Designs powder tool, and then we are going to stamp this in Versamark ink. I'm going to use gold embossing powder and then melt that with my heat tool and use the coordinating die cut to cut it out. Now, of course, I did back this with two more layers just to give it some stability, and then we're going to adhere that with a little bit of 3D foam tape. So the only thing left to do now is to add a little bit of bling and adhere this to a card base. So let's take a look at all of the finished cards. And a quick reminder of our inspiration card here, we've got that central oval focal point with the florals flanking the sentiment and then that beautiful background. And here are the cards that came from that, that were inspired by that card. So this is the one we created together. I love the way that it turned out. That Dahlia cardstock along with the pink sand is absolutely beautiful. Those slices are perfect for creating that oval central focal point. And then the gold foil really complements the whole design and gives a subtle detail to that background. Now this one I actually created live in our Facebook group and it just turned out beautiful as well. I wanted one, all of the others were jewel tones and I wanted one with that lighter color as the base and I think this one is equally beautiful. And I have a hard time choosing which one is my favorite really, but amazingly I am leaning toward this Royal Amethyst. I know, I know, purple, not my favorite color. In fact, my least favorite color. Something about this one just really speaks to me. It is almost royal. <laughs> and finally, we have this mustard colored one, which I think is gorgeous. This one, I did feel like it needed some help with a little bit of a bright color. So I swapped out one of the greens for a blue. And this is the waterfall from Spellbinders. And I think that it really elevated and freshened up this design that otherwise could have been quite autumnal or drab. It just added a just a punch of brightness to it and was perfect. Perfect complement for that holographic foil. And that finishes up today's video. Now, remember, this is just my interpretation of casing. There are many, many ways to case a card. It could be from the sentiment, it could be from the stamp set or the dies used or the color combo. It really is up to the viewer and what inspires you about the design. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed today's video. Hopefully you learned something. Don't forget to check the supply list in the description box below if you're looking for anything that I used today. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.